I want to time travel, and I'd like to take you all with me. I will now close my eyes and rewind 11 long years back. I'm not on stage, not even close. It's almost the break of dawn, and I'm sitting in a bus. A familiar gray and blue old bus that's squeaky and puffing gas fumes inside out, so furiously it gets hard to breathe. I'm sitting there, looking much younger, and I'm wondering, what on earth makes me leave my bed in Baruch at 5 a.m. every morning, wait for endless dark winter minutes in the rain or snow, for a long bus ride that drives away four precious hours of my young life every single day. It's not the luxury of the ride that's the reason, that was the reason. Neither was it the destination. Those daily rides were to Hadas in the suburbs of Beirut, to a construction site that was known back, that was also known back in 2002 as the Lebanese University. I still clearly remember tiptoeing around the rubble and the lavish red soils of a campus getting built to end up being crammed with some 200 other students in a hall, listening to a professor so far away I feel like sending him a postcard from my seat to read in a course textbook that was handwritten by that professor back in the days when probably even typewriters didn't exist. Back then, all I wanted was to study physics, and I did. Coming back to now, to this moment, on this stage, and thinking back of that hard journey, I realize there was much more to it than that. It was a challenge. To take the bull by the horns and to prove to the world that when you're not offered a life, you have to create one. Even if you're born a nobody, you can become someone. If you want to make a difference, you have to fight tooth and nail to actually make one. Not everyone will believe you can do it, though. When I told people I wanted to study physics, they were often discouraging or surprised. They would ask, what do you plan to do with that? Teach? Or are you some kind of a genius who wants to discover something? I didn't listen to them. And eventually, a BS in physics turned out to be the beginning of a journey. Thinking back, those horrible bus rides had a beautiful promise. They were taking me somewhere. After an MS at AUB, I decided to start a PhD in astrophysics in Lebanon, and that was a first. I do not claim to be a genius, but I often wondered, are geniuses born or are they made? And by geniuses, I do not mean the smart pants who can do math. I mean those who stand out and make a difference. I got to believe that science geniuses are self-made. They are not born creative. And to me, becoming a genius has a formula, a formula with five variables. And I'd like to share those variables with you. First variable, originality. To be a genius, to be creative, one has to be original, to think outside the box, to think differently, to doubt the common. When Albert Einstein thought of gravity in terms of geometry in his general theory of relativity, he was thinking way outside the box. Think different is the advertising slogan of Apple. 
What a bigger model of success can one possibly give? The second variable is curiosity, the childlike curiosity. You see, children are unprejudiced. Their thinking is not yet distorted by old habits. It's not intimidated by past failures. And that's a magic component for, for genius, for creativity. The robotic rover that NASA set on Mars to explore is called Curiosity. Very convenient choice of names. Third variable, training. And it's a very important variable. You see, skills and habits required for creative thinking, for creative research, can be passed from the student, from the teacher to the student. And one very remarkable example is that seven Nobel Prize winners in physics were trained by J.J. Thompson, the discoverer of the electron and a Nobel Prize winner. And Mr. Thompson was known to be keen on following up daily on his young researchers, giving them feedback, suggestions. The training they received was their secret. And who trained J.J. Thompson? It was Lord Rayleigh, another Nobel Prize winner for physics. The fourth variable, it's preparation. And here, a saying for uh, Louis Pasteur, the French chemist and microbiologist who had major breakthroughs in uh, cures of diseases and vaccines. He says, in the fields of observation, chance favors only prepared minds. Groundbreaking discoveries that might seem to be pure chance at first glance, they are simply unpredicted detours that happen to people with minds that are well prepared, who are conducting well-designed experiments. So many examples can be given for discoveries by accident. The antibiotics, the cosmic microwave background radiation, the microwave. These are all examples that show that flashes of insight don't just happen to anyone. They happen to people with minds that are well prepared to perceive them as potential breakthroughs. The fifth variable and the final one is discipline. In a scientific context, creativity is constrained and disciplined. Creative ideas, as appealing as they may sound, they, are, they have to be consistent with the fundamental laws of nature, with the results of experiments, otherwise they just fail. Having figured out a formula of genius and its five variables, originality, curiosity, preparation, training, and discipline, I wonder, can I secure those five variables? I'm passionate about physics, and I want to make a difference in the field of theoretical natural sciences, but how? To thrive in any profession, one needs to connect and network with like-minded professionals to discuss ideas, to share ideas and solutions. One needs mentorship, and yet, I look around, and a baffling question just hits me in the face. Where are the science geniuses in my own community? Young, promising Lebanese geniuses are everywhere on the globe but here. What are we missing? What, go what went wrong? First, we lack training. We lack mentorship. Some of us are lucky to have great trainers but, or, or mentors, but those are few. The second thing, we lack proper environments to prosper. We often have to worry about our safety, our security, our future, our country. Third, we lack deep interest in natural sciences. The curiosity element is fading. You see, most young students, they go to study in the fields of application of sciences, engineering, medicine, rather than physics, chemistry, or biology. They do this to secure 
reliable, prestigious, and money-making careers. It's in the psychology of our culture. You are part of that culture. And so am I. Maybe it's time that I made a confession. When Jad, my 17-year-old brother, told me that he wanted to study nuclear physics, in a moment of frustration, I said, forget it. Go study engineering and make some money. I need new clothes, damn it. You see, it's so easy to fall into this vicious loop. But there's always a way out, a way to contribute to science for the love of science, rather than falling for the cliché that science doesn't put food on the table. I believe in that. If you believe in that too, spread the word, it's worthy. AUB believed. It picked on the importance of having a PhD program in Lebanon at a time when most Lebanese universities became pipelines that transfer smart Lebanese brains abroad where they can get decently taught, trained, and supported. But sadly, the attraction remains there. So they stay in those countries serving them. And we get to witness the tragedy of our loss. Were they right to discourage me from getting a degree in physics? No, they were not. I can secure those variables. And I can work out the genius formula. But the question remains, will it be here or elsewhere? Thank you.